Hey everybody. Good morning. Hopefully you all can hear me. I've been seeing all the things that you've been weaving. Those of you who are in the middle and eastern part of the United States, I hope you're staying safe and not freezing to death. There's some crazy cold going on. Fort Collins is right on the western edge of that cold front because we're right up against the um, Rockies. So we had some super cold weather, but we also um, are more used to it in Colorado. So it's going to snow today because it's gotten a little bit warmer. It's up to like 10 degrees. I know those of you in Texas are um, struggling with the rolling blackouts and cold weather that you're not used to. So um, please be safe. Good morning. I'm so happy you're all here from all over, from the UK, um, Canada, all kinds of places. It looks like my internet connection is being not so great. Hold on. I'm going to try one thing. Hopefully I won't lose you. This should help, I hope. Okay. I don't think I lost you. You'll let me know if I'm gone. I won't even know. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. Um, welcome to Change the Shed. It is February 17, 2021, as far as I know. I am planning to be here in two weeks, which is March 3rd, I think. Um, yeah, should be March 3rd. Uh, barring who knows what in this crazy world we live in. Um, yeah, those of you who are well below zero, welcome to the what Coloradoans love to experience in um, January and February. Some of you are from places where it's far colder than here. So um, welcome Aisha from Scotland and um, Arian. I'm going to say your Arian. I'm so bad at names from Germany. Glad you're working on all kinds of stuff. Y'all are. Um, yeah. Um, working on Northern California. Yeah, working on all kinds of stuff. So welcome. Today I am uh, working on the handbasket tapestry. Still, surprise! I'm still on this same piece, but I have done a lot of work on it. So at least to me, it was, it feels like a lot of work to me. Let's see if I can make that bigger. There we go. Okay. Um, this is, we're gonna move that up there. This is where I am. I think last time you saw this, I was hadn't woven any of those words, so I'm proud of myself. I know that um, it's a minor thing, but we have to take what we can get in 2021, right? Um, yeah. Um, so I was debating what I was going to work on today. This little piece is 14 inches square. So this is 14 inches. And I added this little figure who is, this is a basket that's upside down. The thing is woven sideways. I'm orienting everyone, including myself, to um, what's going on in this piece. It's sideways. And this is a basket that is turned. Um, with a figure falling out of it, and this is a foot. And um, let's see if I can move this. Let's get rid of those. There, that should be better. And uh, so I started doing this uh, basket part, which was really fun. I used um, six strands of Weaver's Bazaar Fine to do the basket and I really like, but I did it at eight ends per inch instead of 16 and I really liked how it made it look like a basket because of the um, really shiny worsted yarn and the um, eight ends per inch versus um, the 16 over here. So that was kind of fun. Let's get rid of this tail. All right, I'm gonna start adding, um, this little figure has pants. Excuse my face there. Let's see if you can see that better. 
Um, I'm going to start the blue here just to see if that is what I want to do, and then we'll see how it goes from there. I was going to make a sort of blue jean color. If I was weaving this at a bigger set, this is 16 ends per inch, if it was um, a set where I could use more than one strand of yarn, I would try to find a combination that looks more like blue jeans. You know, so it'd be like blue with a white or something, but in this case, I don't have enough room to do that. I only have one strand of yarn, so I can only pick one color. I do want to, okay, so I'm referring to this. I think I need, oh, hang on. Oh, that's tricky. Okay. So there's a little tiny piece of this basket that comes under that leg. So I'm gonna bring the green like this. So I cannot put the blue in yet because I need to get this line in before I can do her blue jeans. So sorry about that, can't do that today. Um, what we need to do is fill in this whole portion so I can put, um, I want to do a dark outline along the edge of this basket. I'll say this is an internal um, lip of the basket and I might consider using a different, um, a little bit darker color combination for it just so that it looks a little bit different than the part that has more light hitting it. I don't like how this looks. I'm gonna redo this handle. I think that's gonna look weird. Sometimes you don't follow your cartoon because as you look at what you're weaving, you realize, oh, that's gonna look really funny if I move that over there. So just gonna finish this up like this. Um, oh, Elizabeth, I did. I haven't showed the pattern. I, I don't want to take it off. <laughs> so if you go back to an old, Elizabeth was asking, did I miss your pattern? Um, if you go back to an old change the shutter, I apologize. I don't think I have an image of it here. Wait, maybe I do. Nope. Um, if I'm still working on this in two weeks, maybe I'll do that. I'll put an image of the cartoon. Uh, pop an image of the cartoon in here so I can show it. It's a, um, I don't want to take the pattern off because it's using these magnets, which I hate. We had a whole discussion about this. If I take these off, you're going to hear swearing because then I have to get it back on. So anyway, I'm not taking the cartoon off. It's a picture of, um, yeah, I'll show you later. Um, So I'm going to fill this in. I did go to, some of you saw that I went to two shedding devices on this shacked. Um, the upper device is at eight ends per inch and it's not perfect, but it does help. I'm still having to kind of pick that shed, but it is a little bit faster. Oh, Marlena. So those of you in Texas who are here, I just figured nobody from Texas would be here today because no power, no water, no internet. Y'all are just troopers. Clearly, Marlena, you must have cell service. God bless you. Um, so yeah, I, um, it's, it's, uh, Texas is having it rough with rolling blackouts and really cold weather that I think most of you are not at all used to, which means that everybody's pipes are freezing. Um, oh, great question, Kate. Let's talk about that. Kate's asking about um, the handle where it intersects with the letters. So we could actually, I will finish this part up and if I'm still working on this, well, I can't make any promises, but I'll show that to you another time, either in a blog or here. 
Um, Kate asked, did you continue the brown handle at 8, and 8 EPI well the black letters are 16, or how did you fudge in there? It's a great question. Let's see if I can. Let's work on that part, and I'll show you a little bit more closely. Um, let me go out a little bit just in case. Okay. If I turn my automatic, if I turn the focus off on my lens, then it won't keep shifting on you. So she's asking about this part. Um, so I was doing letters and this background at 16 ins per inch. And what did I do here? I left, I think you can see it with the closer up view. Um, I left this at eight ends per inch. So as in all the rest of it, where the eight ends per inch ma um, comes together with the 16 EPI, the 16, the, this yarn is um, fuzzier and it just sort of overhangs the 16 a little bit enough to cover up the fact that the shedding isn't right for that first thing. When you shift from 16 over under over under at 16 to over under over under with every two warps, there is a shedding problem. And so I'm just relying on the fatter weft to cover that up. And I think it's working really well. You can see that um, I see one little warp right there. And so I might go through that might have been an error actually. I don't know if you can see that, but um, when it comes off the loom, I might go through, I can take one strand of this yarn and just plop it right over that little warp and it won't show. Magic. So I'm just flipping back and forth and it seems to be working pretty well there. So Oh, that's a good idea, Janet. Um, Janet's saying when I was talking about the blue jeans, maybe I could add a thin piece of white thread to this blue. I'm going to try that and see how it works. Thanks. That's a great idea. Um, without having a strand that's quite so thick, if I can find a really thin bit of white, I think that might work. Or a lighter blue. Maybe a light blue would be great. Um, okay. Sometimes I am sorry, I might miss some of your questions, y'all. Um, I encourage you to chat, though. Um, Elizabeth is asking, what loom am I, um, do I work on? She has a shacked wolf. This is the shacked Aras, Elizabeth. It's a new tapestry loom they have. It's really a beautiful loom. So um, I use a lot of shacked peg looms also, but this is the tapestry loom that I think is fantastic. And... Let's work on this. So um, tapestry going from bottom to top. The next thing I want to do is uh, fill in the lowest part. And then um, you can see how I do this letter here, which might be a good thing to do today. Uh, OK, I do have a shedding device for 16. Often when I'm doing little short passes, though, I'm just picking it because it is actually faster than reaching up for the shedding device. This is, the trickiest part is here, though, with these letter forms to try to get the... This one was easy because it was straight. The N had a straight part. This is a D, and it's a little bit more tricky to get in there. It's also a funky-shaped D. But... The handwriting in this piece was... Um, intentionally I wanted it to look like it was handwritten like with a marker because <laughs> I am no Sarah sweat I cannot have not pra I should say I have not practiced weaving letters enough to make them even 
and look her letters look like they were typed on a typewriter they're so consistent okay so we're gonna build this up making a little cradle for the edge of that D That's a good question, Leslie. When I twist the yarns, oh, so I wanted a little bit of a, this is something I occasionally do. This is super tiny. I don't even know if you can see there's two. You probably, hold on, let me put this back in. That might help a lot. There's two uh, weft relays here and I don't want a super, um, straight line there. So I'm just going to see if this, I can cut the corner off this little thing, smooth that out a little bit, and then come back up. I think that will work. Just a little trick to get that. And then it, when I put that um, weft in for the bottom of the D, it should look a little bit smoother than it would. I'm also going to put that in eccentrically. Look at me, you guys, you've trained me to change how I say that word. Uh, I'm going to put it in eccentrically, so that will also smooth it. So Leslie asked, sorry, <laughs> got sidetracked by that a little bit. Um, do you twist the threads as you put them in? Do you go with a twist in the yarn or against it? Does it matter? It does matter. Um, but I have to say that when I did uh, this, I wasn't thinking about it. Now that you asked that question, when I twisted, I did twist these Weaver's Bazaar yarns as I put them in because I wanted them to look like a, a basket. I wanted it, instead of all of them blending together, I wanted it to look like, you know how in a basket it looks like there's a reed or whatever. It's a solid thing that goes over. I wanted it to have a bigger um, bead. Bead is the word. Uh, so I did twist it, and I just naturally, without thinking about it, um, with the singles yarn, I always twist right because that is how I would ply this yarn. But if I were actually to do this correctly, um, this is a two-ply yarn, and the ply should actually go the other way. So I should be twisting it this way. I don't notice a big difference, but um, it does actually matter that you ply in the opposite direction of the last ply. If you're going to ply something that's already plied, um, that said, I don't really notice that much in tapestry, the difference, so because it all gets crammed together, it might make a difference with some yarns, but it's a good question. Um, yeah, Chris is saying, um, in her hand spinning. She hand spins Z and plies S. That's a notification or a nomenclature. I am not finding words today. You twist one way and then you twist the other. And every time you twist a bundle of yarns, you go the opposite way. S and Z just indicates which way the twist goes when you look at the yarn. Uh, okay, let's open the shed. So this is one of those moments where I'm, yeah, I want it in this shed where I am going from eight ends per inch, where this um, basket color is, to 16 in the letters. And this will be interesting because I will have this basket color on the inside of that D. And these are the sorts of decisions you have to make. So this little, let me close this. So the little center of the D, is right here. And just by happenstance, I was looking at this warp. So I think I will make the decision to make the bottom of the D with the green, these two warps wide. Otherwise, I'm gonna have 
one warp of this background color and the rest of this um, gold. And I'm not even sure you'll be able to see that. That would be um, a fair amount of work and I don't think it would be worth it. So those are the kinds of form decisions you have to make. Just that that won't work well with the tapestry. So I will decide to do something that I might not have done in a different situation. Okay, I am doing a full sequence of this eccentric. One thing I do like about this loom is that there's more room between the sheds, between the layers of warp, so I can actually get my hand in there. Nancy says the shaft only comes with an eight dent coil. I'm not even sure it comes with an eight dent, does it? I'm using, a, oh wait, I'm using an eight. You're right, it does come with an eight. I encourage them to only sell it with um, four and five. <laughs> this loom has a plastic coil. So it's not like the Mirax looms that have metal that's very, very thin. So I would never use a coil that on this loom that was divided wider than eight because the plastic is too thick and you won't have any room to put your warp. Um, it looks like eight is pretty maxed out. The two warps on this eight dent coil are, um, let's see if I can show you, are, um, so see how the, sorry, bear with me. Ugh. See how the, this is the coil? The warp is filling all of the space in this eight dent coil. If these little plastic, if there were twice as many plastic things, there would be no room for the, for the warp at all. So there's no reason why you can't do what I just showed you there and have two warps or three warps or four warps in the same coil. Okay. The purpose of the coil is just to get the warp evenly spaced. It doesn't hold the warp in place. It doesn't on a Mirax either. It's not like a reed on a loom that's made of steel that's actually gonna hold the warps there. It doesn't work that way. So it's just a way of getting your loom evenly warped. The coil actually does almost nothing once it's warped. Your weft tension has to maintain where those warps are. So there's no reason to have a 16 EPI coil or any, you know, any other, I mean, it, the coil doesn't have to match the set you're using. I guess I should have just said that from the beginning. Um, so basically I used an eight coil and I doubled it. That was the short answer, Nancy. I hope that makes sense. Um, the point about the coil not actually holding the warps though is important. I think that people believe that it does and it doesn't. Your weft tension is what holds the warps in place. The coil will do virtually nothing after the warp, after the, Loom is warped, the coil on either a Mirex or the Shacked does virtually nothing. Um, Barbara, when you put the yarns together in a bundle, do you keep the strands twisted in the same direction? Yes. If I'm um, twisting a bundle, I always twist it the same way. Um, okay. The coil's not really like a rattle. Um, it's acting like a rattle. I guess that's a good comparison, Dana, that the coil is sort of acting like a rattle, that you could um, have different numbers of warps in each one. Um, a rattle is um, probably going to do a better job of keeping the warps in place than the coil will. But OK, I said I was going to show you this. So if I would stop talking and start weaving, you might get to see. Let's see. Let me move. Let's just move that down. How about that? Am I making you sick yet? Okay, you should be able to see that better. Uh, not sure I'm gonna be super happy with this curve, but we'll see. So,
Mary, that's a good question. Mary asked, um, when I warp a double warp like this, how do you get them twisted? So there is another issue there with the coil and such that if the um, warps are in every single dent of a coil, especially on a Mirax where you have, if you can have a bottom coil, it's much easier not to get them twisted. So um, a little bit of twist doesn't matter when you put your header in, it's just that um, you have to keep them in the same order as you weave. So if you're doing some weird thing like this, where you are doing two sets, you might consider doing some waste yarn at the smaller set, like 16, just to get those warps in the right order before you shifted. So the bottom of my piece was at eight ends per inch, but um, that if I had done a little, and I didn't do this, but a little 16 inch warps per inch header that might have made sure that they were in the right order as they were at the top of the loom before I started. Um, basically when I switched to 16 EPI, I just was careful about the first row and then it seems to be working fine. I am adding another piece of, hold on, I'm gonna use the shedding. Okay. I want this to go this way in the shed. So that gives me a little now let's fill that center of that in which I should have gotten out the colors I'm using for that oh here they are I'm using these three um, I wanted three different I wanted a brighter color and a little bit greener color to make this basket. And then this is just a brown. So I liked the effect. I tried a couple different combinations and this was the one I liked. Oh, hang on. Before I do that, let's see. Oh no, remember that tail was super short. So we need a new, new yarn. I know this is gonna continue, so I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. Um, Janet asked about this. This is my new favorite tool for 16 EPI, which is not a set I use very much. Um, this is uh, from, oh, I should have brought his other bobbins. Um, he does, this is one of his bobbins too. Um, Andrew Dickinson is his name, wow. Um, he's a bobbin maker in the UK and Weaver's Bazaar carries his bobbins or his website is artisanbobbins.com, I believe. Anyway, he makes, it's called a hand tip. I love it. I have to say for picking, I'm not a big bobbin user, um, but I think this is the best tool I've used in a long time for this really fine work. I really like it, so it's beautiful. Um, yeah, and he said, I have a couple other of his bobbins. He has these really beautiful, um, ones that he does with, um, there's explanations on his website and his Instagram po um, feed about how he makes these. Um, and then he also has just plain, uh, wood bobbins. Um, So let's add the, so now, so here's a trick, a tricky thing also. So I am just doing this eight EPI in this one little area. This is gonna go back up here to the basket. And so I have to make sure that it would be ideal <laughs> if the way the over under worked here matched up with this part, which will also be at eight ends per inch. So it would be ideal if I get the pairs of warps correct. Um, 
So I can see here, and because I have the shedding device, it's not quite so hard to do that. If I see where my pairs are. Um, oh, look at that. Because I'm talking and not paying attention, this bundle is only half the size it needs to be. I need actually six strands, not three. The letters are um, one strand of Weaver's Bazaar Fine at 16 ends per inch. And this is six strands at eight ends per inch. I often have people think there's a more direct connection between number of strands. Like they would say, oh, you use one strand at 16, so you use two at eight. Not so at all. I use six strands of Weaver's Bazaar Fine at eight, and I probably could use more than that. Um, okay, so I should be good now. I'm going to continue twi t twisting. <laughs> Despite my discussion earlier, I'm going to continue twisting in the direction that I have been twisting this Weaver's Bazaar all along. Although I believe construction-wise, I probably should be twisting the other way. I think I've got the, yes. So here's an instance, Let's see, you can, um, I want this one warp picked up and this is another sort of iffy thing that the, well, we're splitting that and making a weird shed there, but it seems to be working pretty well to split that, um, those two, warps. I've been doing it a lot all along where I move it over just one by splitting the warps. So doing that here. I'm going to try to get this whole little spot. Okay, so the D want that to come up. I'm going to wrap this one more time and we'll see how it looks and I might have to take it out, but my guess is if I do this, it's going to work. Okay. The other thing is to make sure that that it's that the it's wide enough you can actually see the letter that it doesn't get covered over by the I wonder if I've changed the focus of my camera no it is changing okay sorry for those of you who are saying it's a little bit blurry I think it's because my camera lens is not exactly lined up with the plane of the I'm going to try that. If the camera lens is is tilted as to the plane of the weaving, the depth of field isn't deep enough because I have it on auto and there's not fantastic light. Anyway, parts of the plane are in focus and parts are out. For which I apologize. Ooh, I'm so far not liking this very much. Okay, so then the same thing when you go back to 16, you have to make sure that um, I cannot see that. There we go. You have to make sure that your um, getting the uh, wefts in order, which um, opening the shed helped me make sure that I Not having, I don't think I'm having trouble with the Wi-Fi. I turned it onto the Ethernet connection, so I don't think the Wi-Fi is on my end, but could be wrong. 
It, just because it looks good to me doesn't mean it looks good to you all. Okay. I'm going to do this. See how it looks. Great. It looks like I even, did I even get the sheds right? Blessed miracle. I think I planned that, but um, I plan to have the two greens meet correctly and meet and separate with the, um, since the sheds are messed up anyway in the center part uh, with the eight EPI, that was just an extra piece that I put in. It was in the wrong shed, but it didn't matter because it's in the wrong shed anyway because it's going from 16 to 8. Okay. Close that. Oh, good. Some of you are saying your picture's okay, so that's good. Um. had a lot of fun with this double set thing. I think it's really been a great project. Don't know how much I'll do it in future, but okay, this D has a little, um, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see my, you can barely see it. There's a little tail that comes out on these letters like this D. So I need to fill in this background and then get that going over the top of that so I can fill in that D. I'm not super happy with how fat this is right here, but you know what? Hand lettered, right? We're gonna leave it. So this would need to be filled in. I actually haven't finished the last part of this cartoon. The everything on top of this uh, for the last frame. So you can stay tuned to see how I, I have an idea for that, but I haven't drawn it out yet. So um, we'll see how that looks. I might be getting there this week. Definitely my camera focus isn't changing you guys. So if it looks like it's getting fuzzy, um, the, the focus on my hand is not good. So that should be blurry <laughs> if that helps but that should be clear. I turned off the autofocus on the camera, so it's not changing. Just so you know whether you're, it's your eyes or your internet. Um, oh, here's something. There's so many things to remember at once. Um, <laughs> had I not been talking at the same time, it would have been smart actually right around here to, um, Actually, that is not in perfect focus. I will give you that. It's not completely beautiful. Um, I would have done a little hook with this smaller uh, yarn into this. So I probably will um, add a little stitch there when this comes off the loom. I don't want to unweave that part. I usually sew my slits as I go. Many of you don't do that, so. I was using the advantage of the fat, um, let's see, the fat, fatter yarn to cover up a little cheat where you connect two pieces um, with the thinner yarn instead of actually stitching. These I'm stitching because it's uh, eight inch branch. That is, 
Oh, my fingers are focusing out. The focus isn't perfect. It's, I apologize. We'll try again in two weeks and see if I can get it in better focus. My quality control um, upstairs did just say it looks okay, so. Okay, Jan has, Janet Austin has good tips. If you guys don't know Janet, she is a long-term, very experienced tapestry weaver. She has awesome ideas and you should go check out her blog to see all of her work because it's fantastic. Um, but she's saying she likes the um, split warps for a lot of reasons, that it can help you anchor yarns and you can make the um, slits between two warps, which makes them tighter. So great tips, Jan. Um, using this all the time, the doubled warp all the time, even if you don't weave at a double set is a really great tip. Okay, so what I will do from here is, look at that. This could be my eyes, but oh yeah, it looks a little darker there. Anyway, this is hand dyed. So there are splotches where it looks a little bit darker. Um, I love working on this once I get going. So I will just go on and on forever, but it looks there like the, that might actually work out. You're going to be able to see that that's a D and uh, I'll let you know how it goes um, in two weeks. And you might see this on my blog or something in the meantime. Anyway, I hope y'all are uh, doing well, staying warm. Please, everybody stay safe. It's a little, some of you are in a bit of a dangerous situation. So um, please keep yourself safe no matter what. And I guess that is perhaps true of all of us in life. That is how life is. So I've had a lot of fun weaving with you all. I hope you all are weaving um, when you get the chance. Uh, and I will see you in about two weeks, I think, on what I think is March 3rd. Have a good one, everybody. Happy weaving.